Yo, what up? It's Aaron Moses, and this is the 23rd episode of Like It or Not. I will not be having any co-hosts on today. Uh, my girl is in the crib. I haven't been <clears throat> as active recording because uh, if you know, you know, I just got out the hospital. It is what it is. It's not what it's not. But uh, I'm cool for the most part. But yeah, man, um, Cadillac Daddy Trey D was not consulted. Um, Flyboy Chip was not consulted. I am not. Uh, I'm not close to actually bringing them on and rediscovering and re, uh, you know, chopping these topics up more. As you guys may or may not know, I'm in LA and it's currently 12 in the AM. So everybody else that I rock with is on the East Coast as far as co-hosts. So they're probably not open or awake right now but let's get into it man first dumbass topic herschel walker a politician i believe that he's running for a senator of georgia this nigga said that he does not know what a pronoun is while discussing the military and trying to integrate the bible into his message bro how are you going to preach and lead with preaching and the Bible and you don't know what a pronoun is? Now, there are people like me who knows that you know what a pronoun is. You were just trying to be disrespectful and you were being metaphorical. But there are a lot of slow people who think they're smart for whatever reason that took you literally that might have been on your wave but now they don't want to vote for you because they literally think you don't know what a pronoun is number one if you watch that clip there were a slew of grammatical errors no I'm just playing there was only one because that statement that he he made was very short so he but at the end of the day, just being disrespectful to the LGBT community in the state of Georgia, where they say that 50 percent of of black men in Atlanta are homosexuals. That just wasn't wise, man. I do understand that Georgia is a traditional state and it's a state where people want to stick to family values and things like that. But at the end of the day, you see what's been going on, bro. Why would you bash the LG? That's just a whole bunch of people that you need on your side at this point. That's a whole... Out of all these people, you think these people... That, the thing about it is, I'm not trying to compare the two, but I'm just giving real facts. Everybody has somebody that they love that is a part of the LGBT community, just like everybody has a jailbird and a crackhead in their family or some kind of addict in their family or some kind of somebody that has mental health issues with addiction. It is a mental health issue. But outside of just being a straight up drug addict, people have people in all categories in their family. Some people just don't agree with their lifestyles or whatever, but they're not going to. Is You still rubbed a lot, a lot of people the wrong way. So anybody, I do want to say that you should stand up for what you believe in. You should let it be known in certain cases. and other cases, it's just not in your best interest. Now, you could be a player about it and just not speak on it. But for you to down talk the LGBT community, I'm not defending them. I'm defending wisdom. Because you don't want this to become a trend in a certain respect, especially when it comes from you. Not only did you speak down on the LGBT community, quote of Bible scripture, and use grammatical errors all in less than a minute, you did it with a lot of people watching, which is not wise. Not wise for your campaign at all. Man, shout out to uh, everybody that has wisdom and that puts wisdom first in their life. Let's get it. So next, we have Charleston White pulling out a gun on DJ UTV's interview. Now, when I get my technology and my weather together, yes, there will be a reaction channel. 
Um, I don't like to give a lot of any energy to Charleston White at all. Uh, I really don't have enough time to speak on this situation, but if you haven't seen it, Charleston White was getting all fired up. He pulled out a gun like a, like a beautiful baby mama that hasn't seen child support in over 15 years and was ranting, going on about how the gangsters in Chicago should be taking care of uh, their dead homies' families and things like that, which is true. Now, Charleston White is... He's not somebody who I would consider super deep or anything like that. He's just a dude on a suicide mission that decided to dedicate his life to foolishness. The the remainder of his five years on this planet to foolishness. Disrespecting everything and everybody. Trying to flip things and make it sound like something that is not. And... That's a lot of reason. I don't want to put my energy into a black hole. But that was for that was all for show. Um, watching the Rico Reckless and Ewell Samo interview that DJU hosted, I definitely agree with them. They should have not. He shouldn't have had an opportunity to get on a Chicago niggas platform, say fuck Chicago, say fuck all these deceased people's mothers as well as them calling them multiple bitches multiple hoes pull out a gun do what he did and walk away scott ass free as dj ghost said shout out to dj ghost had he been a rapper he would have had an arrest warrant out for him he had no legal right to pull out a gun he did it for show and then threatened somebody else when they were trying to um basically calm him down i think he's a clown he did it for clout and um i think it was staged to be honest because i think with all that security all that muscle and you're supposed to be a chicago nigga now that doesn't mean that you're necessarily tough or a street nigga but at the end of the day the instincts kick in bro the instincts kick in this dude is not somebody that is should be described as a force to be reckoned with he could have been disarmed by a 13 year little 13 year old little girl that just woke up and had her period for the first time that's that wouldn't have been a task and then oh don't walk up on me when i got a pistol in my hand and proceeds to cock it now you look like a goofy now you look like the people that you're condemning how you speak about the dead and you said they promote violence they're devils, they're demons. Bro, I don't even want to get semantic. I don't want to talk about the semantics, but uh, devils and demons do what you just did, what you just displayed. They don't even do that, bro. They don't even do that. And these people you described as devils and demons, all these people you said would kill people, you're doing the same thing they did in their music. But you're just not doing it as as smoothly as they did it. And you're not capitalizing off of that. It's the same thing. And I apologize. It's nighttime. I'm sitting under this umbrella. I thought the light would uh, help. But it's obviously not. So let's go move forward past that. Um, When I get everything in order and when I get the details in order, I will be starting a... uh, I will be a, a regular guest on one of the homies podcasts called The God Project. I just wanted to shout her out, give, uh, give light, give clarity, and give energy to that. I think it's going to be brilliant. We're going to be talking about predominantly spirituality. I don't know how regular of a guest I'm going to be. I don't know if she wants me to co-host. We haven't really talked about the details or went over anything. But it's been uh, a childhood friend. I haven't known her since middle school or anything like that. I met her when I was 19 and she was 18, but that should be real cool, man. She sounds a lot more together, articulate, and aware of what's going on with her spiritually. So I do want y'all to check that out. I don't know if it's going to be on uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, because you know YouTube has a new feature and that is going to be a beast, a monster. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely want you, when I get all the details together, man, make sure you DM me. Hey, what's the details to the guy? Uh, the guy project is what she named it. And I'll definitely let you know. Moving on, we got Kanye West, man. Now, I don't want to say, I don't really particularly know exactly what Kanye said. But 
again, he said some dumb shit. Now, what's up, man? When you can't represent your message clearly, it's just better for you to not say anything. You don't want people to put you in a position where you are just keep going. You're not, you're going to keep going lower and lower and lower. Now, at this point, it's becoming a situation where Kanye West is being just, it, it's not, <laughs> it's just not looking good for bro. And people keep on saying, oh, it's because he's bipolar because he lost his mind. That's not what bipolar disorder does. It doesn't make you a dumbass, inarticulate asshole and make you just say whatever. It gives you mood swings and your and your emotions can be described as something that is similar to a drug. It doesn't make you say stupid shit, man. Shout out to all the bipolar people out here. Kanye West says it's just dumb in a certain way. And that's his marketing strategy. Just saying the most egregious, outrageous, rambunctious, stupid ass shit. And would I take that route? No. He's doing he's doing the Charleston White, man. That's all he's doing. I don't want people to be distracted. And again, I don't want people to to understand that as the way to go about getting clout and maintaining a certain type of energy you don't have to be an asshole you don't have to be uh putting energy in the world that is destructive and chaotic and nasty and ugly i don't again i don't know what he said i don't i I don't know if he said he liked the nazis or hitler was especially important i don't remember exactly what it is it's not about the actual statement it's about the energy bro if you don't know how to articulate yourself if you don't know how to put energy out there in order to receive it and let it be positive, then shut the fuck up, bro. If you don't want to be misunderstood, then don't communicate. Communication is, the point of communication is to be understood. And if you can't execute that task, then talking is not for you, bro. You need to play the defense. Don't play the offense. Just shut up. But this is why you have PR. This is why you have publicists. This is why you have, this is why you have uh, media training, bro. Now, Whatever Kanye West said, it looked like it was stupid. I heard it. I don't remember it. But at the end of the day, I don't think Kanye West truly is a dumbass. I know I said it, but I don't truly think that. I'm speaking for the people who don't who don't think how I think and how Kanye West thinks. We all know that negative energy travels faster and is more dense than positive energy on this planet. That's a fact. Think of 10 people in your family that you don't speak to on a regular basis that can only know things about you if other people told them because you're not going to tell them. Do more people in your family know about the good things about you or the bad things? Exactly. More people in my family know about my criminal background history more than the times that I've attempted to go to college or the fact that I even got my GED when I was 17. My cousin was, oh, you've been to jail. You got a felony. Did you even graduate high school? Bitch, I was in college since I was 17 years old, and I actually tried to go to college two, three more times after that. But you didn't know that. That's ne- that's normal. That is just Earth's vibration. That's just how it is. So he's taking advantage of that scientific fact by trying to keep people's attention. All the good shit he did, you don't know about that because that's not... That's not how Earth is set up. That's just how it is. It's not human nature, and that's not it's, that's not how Earth is set up. People keep on saying they want to take away, oh, if I could snap my fingers and get rid of poverty and get rid of that. We need that negative shit to be better people and to sell shit and to grab people's attention like dogs. If you don't feed a dog and show a dog love, they're going to fucking growl at you, bite you. They're going to piss all over the place and they're going to act like they don't hear you when you call their name because dogs don't care whether you give them negative attention or positive attention in certain after a certain time, bro. That's what Kanye West is doing. Okay? I think he's a uh, I mean, you got to be a genius to be a billionaire. You can't be stupid and be a billionaire. I think he knows what he's doing. I think it's, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's not what I do. You know what I mean? Sometimes I clown around, but it's for entertainment purposes. It's not so I can make more money and get more attention and shit. It's fun. You know, I'm not a fucking troll and Kanye is trolling right now for money. But my last statement on that is don't trade respect 
for attention or money, bro. It's not worth it. Now, next we got... This is going to be kind of a long one. Now, there is a channel. I cannot remember exactly what it's called. But there is a guy who's posting uh, Kevin Samuels clips, making them look all pretty, and reposting them. He's getting hundreds of thousands of views. And this one particular clip he posted... Excuse me. Kevin Samuels said that uh, <clears throat> when he was growing up, most single mothers back in his day were teenage mothers, right? Every, uh, Most of them. Now the trend has changed where women are having their first child in their 30s and their single mothers. Now, as I explained to my woman, there is a trend where people, women are going to sperm banks or fucking on niggas, letting them get them pregnant, and then not telling them that they they have a baby and just raising it by themselves. And statistically, that's not a very good idea, especially in minority communities and things. But at the end of the day, that is the thing. What he said was that women are deliberately trying to be single mothers because they know they can't maintain a relationship with a man. So they use that baby to replace uh, wifehood and having the responsibility of being a good woman to a husband. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, if that's the logic, but everybody needs love and everybody wants, a lot of people, I don't want to say everybody, wants that long, lifelong, unconditional love. That's why a lot of people have babies, which I always thought was weird. Like, I don't, I don't want to have a baby so a baby could love me, like... That's really like some little kid shit. Like all the times that I watch Jerry Springer and Maury and the out of control teenagers come on there and they're, oh yeah, I tried to get pregnant like 15 times since I was 13. But at the end of the day, to me, that's always been a thought process that a little kid would have, a little girl. That for, I wish my baby dolls were real ass shit. Like, you don't have a baby so somebody can love you for the rest of your life. That is not logical at all. That's not logical and that's very immature of somebody to approach creating a life. Okay? But at the end of the day, if people have children for logical reasons, if people position themselves to have children for logical reasons, I think because it has been supported to be chaotic and rebellious, I could definitely see his point. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not even saying 50%. Some women just can't keep a nigga because they just can't. They won't. They're naturally disrespectful. They were raised like that. But at the end of the day, hold on for one second. Excuse me. I don't think it's totally wrong. Because like I told you in previous videos, women are never truly alone because they have friends, because they have the government, because they have niggas that will send for them and stay on the phone with them for hours. Men don't have that. So it would make just as much sense for a man to do that. But at the end of the day, we don't. I don't know the numbers as far as single fathers, but niggas are not becoming single fathers because they're weird and they're creepy and they're just so rebellious and, and, and they can't keep a female. You know why? Because that doesn't make any goddamn sense, number one. And number two, it's harder for a man to get custody in all 50 states than a female of their own child. So for a man to gamble with that, is dumb and the fact that that happens the fact that it's a trend the fact that that's something that people have agreed upon to do and recommend to other women it's fucking uh it's scary and it's retarded it's backwards it's backwards and it shows a lot of lack of self-respect and appreciation for masculine energy so do i agree with it i can't say that that doesn't happen i don't know the rate or the percentage or the statistics on that 
But I don't think it's as common or uncommon as the average person would think. Now, next, I really don't want to talk about this because this is weird. And I don't even want to use this phrase. But Kevin Gates, which is what I was supposed to talk to about with my cousin, uh, Cadillac. Kevin Gates announced that his daughter told him that he eats, I mean, that she eats ass. She's 19 years old. I don't know. I don't remember the conversation that they had. But being that Kevin Gates is a former um, drug user, he's a drug addict. He he used heroin. He booted up. If you don't know what that means, he put heroin in a needle and then put that needle in his arm. Um, that's not regular. You have to be a hardcore drug addict to do some shit like that. Um, shout out to all my drug addicts. I have several friends and family that were uh, that is and are active heroin addicts. But at the end of the day. That's unhealthy for your child to exchange that information with you or provide that information to you. It's weird, it's creepy, and I don't want to put incestuous or, or, you know, the other word on anybody. So I'm not going to say that that's something that Kevin Gates would necessarily do. I don't know the man. I love to hear him speak when he's talking deeply about life and spirituality and decisions that he's made and how he came, overcame his adversities and things like that and made it to the top and how he studied psychology. That's, that's a great experience. But at the end of the day, that is what that sounds like. There is no level of comfortability or self-respect or respect for somebody else as a parent that you should reach that will make them feel like they should be comfortable enough to tell you that they eat ass, okay? Now, at the end of the day, it's not like she revealed her sexuality and told her told him that he, she was a lesbian or she was bisexual. To tell you the activities that take place in the bedroom is just totally inappropriate in that manner. Like, bro, niggas, I just, I don't have a child that that's, that's that old, old enough to be sexually active. I don't even know how I would, like, I wouldn't think about that. Like, for some people, excuse me, let's say, because I had this discussion with somebody else's parents. They were saying, oh, you know, my son's gay, and I hate to think about it, because I know, you know, what you do to another man, they're going to want to do to you. And I was thinking, why are you even thinking like that? Why are you even going there mentally? What is that doing for your mental health? I never in particular understood because I'm not a homosexual. Why somebody feels it's so important to tell their parent that they're a homosexual? Why not them why not you just let them go? I don't know, I don't have that 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 situation. Struggle, fuck it. It's, it is a struggle from what I hear. But I don't think that's I mean, unless you're constantly bringing niggas around or you've been with this nigga, like, do you want to hold this man's hand that bad or kiss him in front of your people that bad or call him honey, sugar? I don't know, bro. I'm not trying to... I am trying to judge it because I don't understand it. But at the end of the day, I'm not saying it's bad or good, but I don't... I don't get why it's so important to... You know, I guess you just want your parents to know you as much as, as possible. But... I don't know. It's not the same thing as saying, Dad, you know I eat ass. You know I fill my stomach with gallons of... Like, bro, what the fuck? I don't need to know that. The fact that you feel comfortable with telling me that means that I didn't do my job and you... I don't know if you're intoxicated. I don't know if you felt like I did something to the point where you should have any respect for our relationship as father and daughter. But, bitch, I don't need to know that you put your face in a nigga's booty and lick it. But at the end of the day, Kevin Sam, I mean, ooh, R.I.P. Kevin Samuels, man. Shout out to the Pisces. Kevin Gates was, like, going viral for years for saying that he eats booty. Which, nigga, I don't even, that's you. That's what you do. We don't really need to know that. That's how you want to go viral. I don't listen to Kevin Gates. I don't think he's... He's just not for me. I've said on many occasions that Kevin Gates is trash, and I, re- I prefer him to speak more than to rap. But at the end of the day, uh, I guess if you put that out there and she had to go to school and get made fun of, <clears throat> you put that out there. 
So if you eat ass, then people probably would assume that the apple doesn't far, fall too far from the tree. And they tried her and she did it. And now she's going viral because of you, bro. That's how, that's weird, bro. That's strange and it's odd. And I hope to never have that level of accountability with my child. That's weird, bro. Going on because this is making me uncomfortable. Now, if you guys don't know, there is a guy, a white guy named Kelpie, Lil Kelpie. He calls himself Kelpie the Pimp. He went on No Jumper saying that he was some pimping, you know. And uh, he got he got chopped up. He got roasted to oblivion. He was called multiple bitches. He was called the F word. And he came back to No Jumper twice. The second time he came back to No Jumper, he got physically assaulted by a rapper named Almighty Suspect. Now, the fact that... He allowed that to happen the first time. All the name calling, all the disrespect, and he didn't walk off. That says a lot. The fact that he came back to go viral again, that says a lot. Now, do I think it should have happened? I don't think it should have happened on camera. I think it was great podcasting. The numbers went up. They got a million views in like a day. They're probably at like four million right now. But at the end of the day, again, with this with this Charleston White Kanye West mentality, bro, it could have been, there were a, a different strategies that could have went on that didn't happen, different methods. There could have been a lot more, but you took the bitch way out. You knew that this was going to happen. I don't like when he lies. There's a lot of lies coming out of his mouth. I don't like when he lies. The reason that he was on that Kratom, I don't even know what, the, what, what Kratom is for real. Um, he said he takes it so he doesn't have to do his opioids or opiates. Two different things. And uh, he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want it, bro. If that was the case, then you would have came ready. You would have let the interview go a, a little bit longer, a lot bit longer. Explained things, promoted things, because there was no guarantee of what would have happened to you. You don't know if that man would have let you back in his on his platform for real. Because he got rid of C Mac and C Mac was doing numbers. I don't know if he did more numbers than Kelpie necessarily, but that wasn't smart to gamble with that because like another YouTube slice in for the piece says, bro, you don't put out any new music. You didn't put out any merchandise. You haven't done any of that. So you're really just going on there, saying your name, putting this information out there, promoting the little girl's OnlyFans. And, bro, she's trash, bro. She's trash. That's a fact. I'm not saying it because other people said it. I'm saying it because it's a fact. If you Google trash, her name is going to pop up, bro. It's going to happen, bro. I have several dictionaries in my home. Biblical dictionaries, Spanish dictionaries, English dictionaries. Before I made this podcast, I looked at all of them. And when I looked up the word trash, her face was next to all of them, bro. That's a fact. The other Spanish dictionary, Basura, her name was in there with her face. It's a synonym and a noun as well as a verb. So that's not a good look for you, bro. It was, um, it was a bitch move. It was a bitch move because you could have got him fired. I mean, that was his own decision to to get up and hit you in the face all those times and you did nothing. You tried to swing back. That's not true. You were incapable of reacting at all because you were high. Because you wanted to be high because you were scared. That's what happened in say it like that. Next topic, man. Uh, we got oh, T.I. T.I. snitches on his dead big cousin after he dies during the gun case now i don't remember i don't know if you guys remember but ti got caught with a whole slew of guns a small arsenal i believe it was it was this is years ago 10 plus years ago but um the fact that he did the little 1-800 callers call the police 
that little commercial, he testified against the nigga who killed his friend, R. Pizza for long. And now he's putting out the information that he apparently could speak to the dead. You know, he had his he was Ouija boarded up, and his cousin told him it was okay to tell on him. Now, T.I. is a, a former street guy. I don't know if he's a part of any formal organized criminal syndicates. I don't know if he's a crip, blood. He's definitely not a GD vice lord. I don't know what he is or what he claimed to be at any point. But in a lot of instances, you know, the word snitching, you know, it is something that should be taken very into consideration during these situations. Now, in the street, which I'm not a street guy, I'm not in a game or anything like that. But being blessed to be around representatives of that lifestyle, I came to an understanding and to a strong conclusion that snitching is giving incriminating uh, evidence or statements to any uh, uh, officers of the law outside of your own lawyer, right? Incriminating evidence on somebody else that is an officer of the law, to somebody that's an officer of the law, while you are currently a criminal, okay? Let me repeat that. Giving incriminating evidence to any officers of the law against somebody that is a criminal while you have partook, partaken in criminal activities, okay? I'm going to give you an example. If you hit your man and he hits you back and you call the police, you are a snitch, you committed a crime, you're a criminal, and you told on your man. Now, let's go to that soft white underbelly uh, episode with, the, I think her name was Marisol. This bitch was like, oh, yeah, um, I'm in a gang, and another gang member beat me up. That was a man, and I caught the police on him. As he is, am I a snitch? And her OG said, oh, no, you're not a snitch because no man should be hitting a woman like that. Her motherfucking ass is a snitch. Bitch, you said you were in a gang. You said you were a criminal. And you gave incriminating evidence to the police, to the judge, to the to the district attorney. And he went to jail. Even if he didn't go to jail, you still, you still did that. That's a snitch. That's what a snitch means. I don't know how y'all do it in different cultures and different area codes and zip codes and regions of America, but the only two places that I've indulged in criminal activity for real was Chicago and Atlanta, and Chicago and Atlanta, you would be considered a snitch. I don't know how they do it everywhere else, but uh, one thing that a lot of people have in common as far as the streets and shit like that is the code. That's That's universal. You cannot do shit to people, and when they do it back to you with equal or greater force, you call the police on them because you lost. That's snitching, bro. Fuck all that 48 laws of power, fucking art of war bullshit. That doesn't apply, bro. That's that's not. You're a snitch. You're a snitch, and you're going to die like that, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah, there's nothing you could do to take that, to make that cool. So, T.I., oh, I told on my cousin. Bro, by definition, you were indulging in criminal activities and you gave incriminating evidence on somebody else that could have got them locked up. He was dead? Okay, let him be dead then. Stop putting negative energy on his shit. Stop, stop. That's disrespectful. His children have to grow up. His family... They thought what he thought about them, but then now they have this, this extra little piece of bullshit that you put on his name. Yes, you're free. You get to be with your family and all of that. But what was the point of you making all that goddamn money for you to turn around and be reduced to this? Like, number one, people already thought that you were a snitch. That's true. I'm from Atlanta, bro. Niggas already felt like that, thought like that. You made it work. I mean, I never really was a huge T.I. fan, like I said. King was the last album I listened to. I probably listened to three songs off of uh, T.I. versus T.I.P. Never really liked it, man. Rubber Band Man, I had it on the iPod shuffle at some point, probably. 
Uh, I'm 90s baby, man. 90s baby. I graduated in 2009. I eight actually. Supposed to graduate in 2009. I dropped out. But at the end of the day, that's weird, bro. We got situations like this all over. Mubu Crump's uh, rapper from Chicago. Mubu Crump's brother told the police that he killed somebody and it wasn't it wasn't himself, so he could get off. That's snitching, bro. That's not. <clears throat> that's not honor, bro. That's weird. That's weird. The Keith E.D. dude told on his nephew. That's weird. Uh, I know somebody who told on somebody who already had life. Well, they were, they couldn't get out anyway, bitch. You don't know that motherfucking shit. You told on a nigga that was already had life. Oh, he said it was okay. He Well, the street code didn't say it. The streets didn't say it was okay. You supposed to live by a code, bro. If you don't want to do that, bro, then just don't do it, my nigga. Like... I'm going to give you the simple to pee analogy. You could shoot a three, but if you're out of bounds, it doesn't count. You are out of bounds. You are not playing, playing according to the rules and the regulations of the game. So it's not cool. It's not. And you could tell yourself all those stupid little stories you want, but integrity fucks with the soul. It fucks with spiritual growth. It does. Breaking the integrity and having no integrity fucks with you fucks with you it fucks with you mentally emotionally and spiritually and physically so moving on we got uh <laughs> oh the last topic man we we moved through these man we moved through these the last type of guy i got man i want to say free hood rich pablo juan man he got caught up on a rico case uh I guess they were saying he was allegedly selling drugs. I mean, I guess it's not allegedly now. They proved him guilty or what have you. What have you. They gave him 15. They're saying he only has to do five. Well, I think he was in there for about two already. So he has to be uh, coming home in about three years. They said at least five, which we know what that means. But uh, out of the 15-year sentence, he has to do at least five. And... Um, he is going to serve the rest on probation. Now, again, you know, shout out to her, Rich Pablo Juan. This sounds a little fishy. I'm not familiar, too familiar with the feds because I'm not a super overly criminal thug, that ass nigga, man. I've been in jail. I have been threatened by the feds and threatened to do 20 years when I was 19 years old. I'm not the smartest, most gamed up person when it comes to the law. But... I don't, I've never heard that when it pertains to the federal government. When it comes to, to RICOs, now, a lot of states, if not every state, has a BI, a Bureau of Investigations. Not just the FBI, there's the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. I believe there's a Florida Bureau, an Illinois Bureau of Investigations, Maryland Bureau of Investigations. And they have the power to put a RICO on you, and they might just have their own law. So it might not be a fair case. I should have did more research on this, to be honest, and I want to apologize. But that sounds a bit fishy. Because the feds, I've never known them to get deals like that. You usually have to do 85%. Even in the states, they give people 85%. So if they give somebody 10 years, they will have to do eight and a half. And it's really nothing that you can do to escape that with the, uh, with the feds. With the state, I mean, for violent crimes in Illinois, that's what I'm going off of. I've never had to deal with law enforcement like that in Atlanta. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I know you can go to classes, do courses, go to rehab, get a job, and they'll knock your time down. Um, free my little cousin, man. He just got caught with a pistol and I believe an assault or a battery. He's not going to have to do that much time. If they give him three and a half years, he's only going to have to do two. Okay. He's only going to have to do maybe 27 months or something like that. But that's that's contingent on his activities. You know, him going to <clears throat> getting his GED, going to classes, learning a trade, learning a skill, getting a job not getting into any major trouble, not getting caught with any weed, dropping dirty, anything like that. I've never, ever heard of the feds giving somebody 15 years 
but saying you only have to do five years and we're going to give you 10 years felony probation. I've never heard of that. I'm not saying that he told. I'm just saying it's possible. I'm saying anything is possible. But don't do crime. If you can't do the time, man, don't do the time, bro. You are responsible for you. You don't need to be out here telling on anybody, crying, writing books, doing extra. You don't have to, bro, just don't do it. If you could do something to shave the time, curb it, because it's not like I'm this. I don't like when people call me a jailbreaker. I've been in jail a, a, a lot. But people who go to jail once usually go to jail. That's why I don't consider myself a jailbird, bro. Because people who usually go to jail once, they usually go to jail like five, six times. They know you don't just go to jail once, usually. Especially a black man. And plus, I was doing extracurricular activities. I wasn't a normal nigga. So a jailbird, it's not like I just know everything about jail and all the ends and not, well, low key. But I wasn't like a career jail nigga. Like I know people that, I know people that spent more time in jail than anything. I know people who have only been out of 50 years, they've only been free for two and a half. And that was last year. Like nigga, like, oh yeah, I went, I was only free this time for like two months the longest i've been going to jail ever since i was 15 like what nigga what but you want to tell me about the streets like you don't know anything about the streets you've been in prison the whole time nigga what the fuck you just got out of you just did three years in the joint you just did three years in prison you've only been out for two and a half this is the longest you've ever been out of prison since 1993 you're back in this bitch. You just did a year in county right now as we're meeting. And now you want to tell me about the streets? You don't know about the streets, sir. You know about prison, bro. You're a fucking experiment. Your life is over. Because you can't function in society. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I'm not shitting on those people. That's a fucked up ass, shitty ass life to have. That's not a life at all. It's not a life at all. Like, the first time was enough for me, bro. It was. I just kept going back. That's what they say about jail. The worst thing about jail is getting used to going to jail because there's nothing stopping you. Now I have the mentality before, if I, I'm not even a criminal. I'm not even an active criminal. But my mentality after the first couple times I went to jail was, if I do this, how long is this going to get me? All right, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Like, I would for real Google or look it up or call somebody that's been in jail more than me. How much? Man, you gonna, you probably going to come home. You gonna, They're going to they gonna let you come back to the crib, nigga. They're probably going to give you, like, 30 days. All right, 30 days, bet. Like, that's not... Everything I gauged was how, depending on how much time I thought I was going to get, bro. Which is slightly how much, I mean, that's slightly what I did before because I wasn't trying to drive around with zips on zips and all kind of, all kind of foolishness because I did, you have to take that in consideration. But when it, when you go and you know the, the process, it means a lot more to you. The la the second to, was that the second to that? Mm-hmm. The second to last time I went to jail, it scared me because at some point I was like, damn, what have I become? I was like, bro, I don't want to hear all that shit. Just take me to my crib, bro. I called to sell my crib and I was like, damn, I am a, they got my ass. I'm an animal. But I haven't had a new case in, in, in uh, 12 years, bro. I've been doing, I've been straight. I haven't had a new case in 12 years. Yes, I just got out of jail in 2018. But it's not like I'm in there for fucking years and shit. I've never been to prison or nothing like that. But it's been a considerable part of my life. Altogether, like two years, which is a lot. But still, that and having a warrant for almost 10 years. That's a lot, my nigga. Having a warrant is like... Going to jail, but getting let out on the weekends. Because that's the only time I would really pop out. 
I was scared to go to the store and have people over because if they fucking did some stupid shit and the police got caught, then I'm going... Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just all bad, bro. It was sucky. I should make a video about that. But it is what it is. Like it or not. Let me see. Let's run through these topics again and I'm going to give my thoughts on them. Herschel Walker disrespects the LGBT community by saying he doesn't even know what is a pronoun. That was dumb. It was disrespectful. Herschel Walker sounds like he reads, you know, a Dr. Seuss here and there sometimes. But he knows what a pronoun is. He was just trying to be funny. It wasn't that funny because he kind of sounded very serious. Charleston White waved his um, pistol around while disrespecting the dead and their mothers. That nigga's a goofy. I don't even want to talk about it. I shouldn't even talk about that. The God Project with me and the homie coming very, very soon, man. Let's get it. That's going to be cracking. We're going to talk about spirituality. And I don't know. I haven't talked to that. I haven't talked to her in some years, I don't believe. So that should be cool. Definitely check it out. I'll, I'll fill you in on the details as soon as I know them. And if I don't and you see me getting cracking on any other platform, DM me and I will let you know. We got Kanye West saying some stupid shit. Man, protect your body, mind, and your soul, your mental health. And you don't have to be negative to be positive. You know what I mean? You don't have to get in the... You don't have to go in the red socially to get in the black financially. Kevin Samuels said that a lot of single mothers have children because they can't keep a man. <laughs> I agree, not all, not most, some. It's common, but not as common as you think or uncommon as you think. Kevin Gates says that his daughter eats booty. That nigga's weird, you need help. And I pray for both of y'all in the development of anything or anybody that uh, that comes in contact with you. And if she has any children, I hope that they have a more respectable relationship and appropriate relationship that you share with your daughter because that was totally inappropriate and for you to share that it was disgusting and I'm disappointed in you uh Kelpie it wasn't even a fight he I wouldn't even say he got beat up he got punched a couple times by almighty suspect <sighs> again that was some that was some pussy shit on 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 a lot of levels when it comes to you maintaining it was you could have capitalized on that a lot more. You would have, if you would have fought back, that, and your mom probably watched it. Just sad, bro. Just sad. And then we got, uh, what else? T.I. Oh, T.I. comes out of the closet and says that he prefers men to his own wife because she looks like a stuffed on piece of bubble gum. I mean, that's cool. I don't think the whole world needed to know about your sexuality and your relationship with the man's butt. But that's what you want to do, bro. I don't... Shout out to the LGBT community, man. Shout out to the LGBTI community, bro. I don't really care about shit like that. But if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. That's your body, bro. And then, um... Free Hood Rich Pablo Juan, if he didn't tell anybody. That deal sounds a little funny. But it is what it is, man. Yes, yes, sir. To wrap it up, we got Aaron Moses solo dolo, man. Like it or not, episode 23, man. Like I said, I just got out the hospital. Everything's okay. I'm going to be fine. Uh, I don't know when the next time I'm going live. Because my job's on some bullshit as far as these hours. Um, I thought it was... I, you know what? I don't want to say all of that because you might be able to figure out how I, where I work. And um, I don't want that to be revealed. So I got to keep it quiet, man. Because some people are a lot smarter than I give them credit for. And some people are a lot more crazy and bored than I give them credit for. So let's get it, man. Give me all the positive energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last thing, last thing, last thing. So I went to the cemetery and I put a beer on my ancestors' graves. I went under the tree because it was sunny that particular day. And um, I wanted to meditate before I poured my libations. 
and this fucking crackhead. Now, my girl said that this is common, grave robbery. Uh, but she kicked the can to see if it was anything in it. It was still cold. This fucking J, and if you don't know what a J is, a J stands for junkie, a fucking drug addict. Obviously, a drug addict, a homeless bitch. Shout out to homeless bitches. But at the end of the day, fuck this homeless bitch. She pulled the big ass potato out her right pocket, put it in her left pocket, or one of her bags. Bag lady ass bitch. Shout out to bag lady ass bitches. But she was going to bend her crusty crab ass over. Shout out to that wasn't the diss towards the Crips, man. Shout out to the Bloods as well as the Crips, the GDs, the Vice Lords, Thirteens, or to everybody in between, man. Latin Kings, anything that anybody that's in the street, man. Shout out to you. But Krusty Krab being a reference from SpongeBob, because she had a SpongeBob body. SpongeBob body ass bitch was about to put my ancestors' beer in her motherfucking possession. But I crept up behind her like the Black Panther and stood there. And my Superman stands ready to Spider-Man this bitch. And she turns around because she could feel the heat, the Aries righteous anger coming from my face on the back of her motherfucking pimple pussy ass neck. And she smiled and proceeded to walk away. I was offended. My ancestors were offended. And you have something bad coming to you because something like that, that's, that, that, that's horrible for you to do. For you to disrespect the dead and their predecessors. So at the end of the day, I mean, as I've heard my whole life, if you do it once, it's going to be easier to do it twice. Okay? If you did it once, it's going to be easy to no tank shit over here. Oh, but you could just suck a dick. And if you don't like the flavor, that doesn't mean you're gay. You just suck the dick one time. No, nigga. It's just going to make it easier when you get drunk and high and high and drunk off a of wine skunk. For you to put, for you to continue to run on the treadmill of dicks in your mouth, so I don't agree with that. But at the end of the day, shout out to people who run on treadmills with dicks in their mouth or whatever I just said. That bitch had done that before. You go around the fucking cemetery. Excuse me, not the fucking cemetery. You go around the cemetery and you steal alcohol off of people's graves. You need to be in a grave, bitch. Don't ever do that shit again, and I know you will. Disrespecting the dead. Curse you. Curse you and everything you try to build if you keep on stealing from people's fucking, not their graves. Their, their graves, bro. Horrible. That's the worst. That's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, bro. That's nothing that you should be doing at all, ever to anybody, no matter what the circumstances. You're a piece of shit. So I do want to say thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your holidays. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving, the time with your family, being beautiful, beautifying the air with all of the beautiful, wonderful smells coming from your kitchen. And I hope God does everything for you that you want him to do. I hope he moves in your life and touches you. And if you don't believe in God, then I hope wonderful, beautiful things happen to you. And, uh, you find peace and happiness in your hedonistic, horrible, moral, careless, characteristicless ass life. You're going to die and go to hell. No, nah, I'm just playing. Probably not. But, hey, it is what it is. It's not what it's not, man. Like it or not, episode 23, Aaron motherfucking Moses, solo dolo. I'm the band, you the band, we the band together, main life's in the breath. Breathe it in.